Hi, everybody. This is Dawn Mitchell, and welcome to Dawn of Sports. I always say this every week, but I'm really excited for this guest. Jim is really good friends with Latroy Hawkins. You know who he is, a former star for the Twins, pitcher that was just amazing that I knew back with the Chicago Cubs. He not only has a new business, he also has a podcast, a thick skin podcast, but we're talking baseball. We're talking Latroy and what he's doing now. And he's just one of those all time good guys. And I kind of agree with USA Today's Bob Nightingale back in the day when he tried to get him in the Hall of Fame with a vote. If I could have a vote, get him in. I know he can't do it anymore, but I would love to have seen him in there with Joe Maurer. Anyway, we have LaTroy Hawkins, the Hawk, coming up with a really good interview and more. Stick around. Yes, welcome back to Dawn of Sports. Yes, this is show stars Dawn Mitchell of Fox 9. I'm Jim Suhan from Star Tribune. Brandon Morton is our longtime producer. A lot to get to today. We will finish the show with a nice long chat with my old friend Latroy Hawkins. Uh, Dawn actually covered him in Chicago as well as up here. Um, and uh, Latroy has always been one of my favorites. Great wide ranging conversation, as they say. We talk about everything from uh, to the Twins' new bullpen to uh, his relationship with with Patrick Mahomes and Taylor Swift. Uh, not his relationship with Taylor Swift, but we talk about Taylor Swift. Uh, great conversation with LaTroy, which is not surprising. But, Don, for us today, let us start with Chris Finch. Uh, first of all, yes. he came out to Head Flyer Brewing on Saturday uh, for the John Krasinski Show. NBA coaches don't do that. They don't come out to local podcasts, and they don't sit in front of fans at bars. Chris is just that kind of a guy. Very gracious of him. He was a blast. And then the next night, Sunday night, uh, the Timberwolves win and send him to the All-Star game as the All-Star coach. Uh, I'm really happy for him. He's such a good guy. And uh, as I wrote about in the Monday Star Tribune, yeah, it's been a, a bumpy last month. They haven't played as well as they did earlier. But we have to pull the camera back and remember, they're still on a historic plane here. They are still going. This is still going to be one of the great seasons in Timberwolves history. It's a likable team. And, and Finch deserves a lot of credit for all of that. Yeah, and I think fans need to remember that just because you're having a great season doesn't mean that it's infallible, that, you know, there can't be bumps in the road, you know, and sometimes when when you face adversity during a good season, that's what gets you ready for the playoffs, you know, when everyone's just kind of cruising through and they get to the playoffs, that's when you see, like, you know, you're, you're just slammed in that first round, you're like, you're bounced, you're swept, so I don't see any of the the tough road as a bad thing overall when they're playing good basketball. But when it comes to Chris, I just, I was just so happy because, you know, they clinched the best record in the West, right? Through games played so far through what, well, let's say through the fourth or whatever's coming up. And they even have the tiebreaker scenarios. That's not an easy feat to do, especially when you're the Timberwolves, right? <laughs> and to be the, the first uh, head coach to, since I think Flip Saunders to get that, to get the all-star mm -hmm. game, that's just coaches, you know, all they get is if they win, right. If they win the whole thing, great coach. Like it's hard to get like these little nuggets of, of, um, honor. And that really is one. So I'm just, he's so cool. He's so chill, you know, he's laid back and to see that smile, like that little kind of quirky smile on his face. Um, when he gets that, I, I, um, couldn't see his face on the podcast. So how was that when he was on the podcast? I mean, I think that was before he found out, right? Yeah, it was Saturday night, so he yeah, hadn't gotten yeah. it yet. Uh, he, he was just great. He, just, he likes talking about basketball. He's very human. He lives in Minneapolis and walks around and eats the same places I do. Uh, he just, you know, listen, I, I know a lot of people at a lot of levels in the Timber Worlds organization, and everybody loves him. And mm. you think back, you're like, listen, Tom Thibodeau is a really good coach. Right. And if you get Tom away from the arena, he's a really good guy, but he could not shut off his hyper that his almost his competitive anger when he was in the right. building. So even though I know Tom's a good guy and everybody knows he's a good coach, he wore out his welcome incredibly fast, A, because he wasn't a very good general manager. He, the Butler deal killed him, but also because he built up no equity in the organization. Nobody wanted to be around him. Uh, and he's a good coach. Finch is the opposite. Finch, 
everybody loves Finch. Uh, you know, I even my wife knows people in the organization and they, they'll text and say, oh, Finch, he's such a good guy. Uh, yeah. So it's just it's fun to see good people succeed. It's good that a nice guy isn't finishing last so far. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, if you're new to Dawn of Sports, we have great guests. LaTroy this week. We've had everybody from uh, Mark Rosen, Chad Greenway, Brian Robison, Mike Tarico, Katie Storm, Andrea Yock, Julia Daniels, um, Laura Oakman. You know, we just had great guests throughout. Dawn gets almost all of them. And I really appreciate her efforts in that regard. Jack Jablonski is another one. It's been a blast to do the show. What we do is we start off the shows with talking about our favorite stories of the week. Then we have our interview at the end. We want to thank Rudy Luther Toyota uh, for being such great supporters of women's sports and our women's sports shows at TalkNorth.com. Ready for a women forward car dealership? Rudy Luther Toyota empowers their many women on staff in sales, management, and service. Whether you are looking for a new Toyota or pre-owned vehicle, Rudy Luther Toyota has something for everyone. Every vehicle comes with a Luther Advantage. Ten cents off fuel and car wash discounts at holiday stations, Luther Advantage warranty, and five-day return policy on pre-owned vehicles. Located just five minutes west of downtown Minneapolis, off 394 and General Mills Boulevard. And they're also hiring. Want to join the team but don't know where to start? Visit RudyLutherToyota.com today. I also want to throw out a, just a plug for my favorite men's clothing store, Twill in the Dining Galleria. If uh, anybody out there ever wants to shop for a the man in your life, uh, father, brother, husband, spouse, whatever, I highly recommend Twill. Check it out and tell uh, Scott Dayton, the owner, that uh, we sent you. Uh, let's, let's get on to now the links. The links have been... I'm writing about this this week. They have gone through so many point guards since Lindsey Whalen retired. Oh, Whalen yes. retired in 2018. And you knew it would be, you know, they weren't going to get another Lindsey Whalen. She's one of the greatest to ever play the game. But you figured they'd kind of find somebody who could just play the position. And the sad thing is they found a lot of players who are good or talented or capable and so often, either they just didn't quite fit what Cheryl wanted or they got hurt. Uh, they've had a lot of injuries at the position and they've had a lot of people come in and just not quite be good enough. And now they go out and get Courtney Williams, who's a true point, starting point guard in the league, coming off her best season. They get Heidemann, who's going to be a very strong backup. They might have finally found a combination that will solidify that position. Yeah, I, you know, and I think many fans are a little weary right now because there's just so many changes going on. Like uh, Someone texted me or well, not texted messaged me going, I don't even know anybody that's on the links right now other than Nafisa Collier. And I'm like, well, that's just the nature of sports. Why is this so different? I think because for a long time, everyone was used to the Lindsay's, you know, the Simone's the, and, and I think the patience has to be there. And it's hard to, everyone wants a point guard to be another Lindsay Whalen. Well, that's, she's a once in a lifetime generational talent. Like yep. give these other players a chance, you know? So if you get Courtney Williams in, I think Ford Alana Smith is going to be good. Um, mm -hmm. Bridget Carlton is back. Um, Nafisa Collier, she's already going to the Olympic qualifiers again. I mean, you have talent on this team. Like let's get our head out of the past and put it in. The, the now. And you, when you have a coach like Cheryl, who can get the best out of everyone when it comes to players, let her work her magic. Let them get together. I have I have high hopes for uh, Courtney Williams, but you're right. There's so many injuries. You can't you you can't um, know when an injury is going to hit someone. You also can't put your finger, Jim, and you've seen this in a long time on 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 the chemistry. You know, a team has to have chemistry. You have to be able to work the offense. You have to have all of that in a short amount of time. So I just think maybe patience will be the key. Um, and, and hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how it all gels together. Right. And big picture, they were always going to have to rebuild. They kind of yeah. hung in there after Lindsay retired and after right. the championships were over, they actually hung in there. They got to the semifinals in 2020 uh, right. with a team that I didn't think was particularly all that deep or talented. And they found a way but there was always going to be a lull. And mm -hmm. part of the lull was the fact that when they, even when they got a, a good point guard, like Clarendon was a very good player who really fit what Cheryl wanted. Uh, you know, a leader, tough defender, 
uh, a thinker, uh, you know, somebody who could orchestrate an offense and Clarendon just couldn't stay healthy. And so you know, even when they've had good players, it hasn't necessarily worked out. Uh, Collier is, has gone from being a very good player to being a star and she might become a superstar. Yeah. They need to get Diamond Miller healthy. They need to use the seventh pick in the draft well this year. Uh, and I think the, all those things with Courtney Williams, with Heidemann, uh, they have a chance to be get back to being you know, an above 500 playoff team. That's probably the realistic goal here. And I was, uh, maybe I was surprised. I don't know if you were that um, when Nicolina Milic, I, I hope I'm saying, I always mess up her last name. She always laughs at me. Um, she's sitting out. She's going to stay overseas. Yeah. So yeah, it's too bad. That, she's a nice player. Um, she is. And she has size and she has some creativity around the rim. Uh, and, and Jessica Shepard's not going to play. Um, and those, those are losses. I don't think they prevent them this from being a good team. Exactly. I'm with you on that. And you, I think we would hear more if like, Whoa, oh, that superstar is going to sit out. Well, the, other than Nafisa, they don't really have superstars yet. No, nope, she's the key. Yeah. No doubt yeah. about it. And yeah. I think Courtney Williams will help a great deal. Uh, yes. Let's do our Minnesota Aurora Minute. I just wanted to highlight somebody I got a chance to talk to yes. uh, early last season. That was Tiana Har- Harris. Uh, she she played a couple different places to college. She came up here. She really didn't have any idea what the Minnesota Aurora was. She found out about him. She ended up jumping in. She ended up leading the team in minutes last year. Very strong, physical defender. Uh, this isn't new news, but I want to highlight it. She signed her first professional contract with FC Fleury 91, who played in Division I Feminine, the first division. And I, if I messed up any pronunciations, I'm going to apologize. Uh, it's the first division of women's uh, soccer slash football in France. It's a really cool thing that someone who didn't even know what the Minnesota Aurora was ends up playing for the Aurora, having a great season, and then getting to sign a professional contract. That's what it's all about for this organization. Well, especially so I think uh, she went over there last year. She yep. was kind of like thrown in there right at the end um, and to to be kind of thrown into it and then to do so well and for them to want her back. And I, I kind of follow her on Instagram and mm-hmm. she – I can't speak enough about her. You're absolutely right, Jim. Uh, she came in and she was a leader. Um, and then, she, you know, she showed, she showed by example. Uh, I started my soccer career as a defenseman. And sometimes it's hard to, cause it's usually always the, uh, you know, the midfielder or the superstar, or whatever that is. A le- she established herself as the leader of that team, the vocal leader and um, had a lot of people look up to her. And so then to take that next leap and go to France and then to be so successful and sign this contract, it's, um, I just hope it's one of many, you know, cause I think now, I think when we had um, Nicole on, didn't she say, I think she's got five or six women that have already gone pro. Um, so I just think that that's fantastic and just leads into this a little bit more. And these women don't forget from whence they came. Right. You know, Tian is still like, what's going on with the Aurora? How can I help? Or what's going on? Checking in. So I think that that's kind of cool. Yeah, Tian is a really cool person. I'm glad to see her having a success. All right, a couple more topics before we get to Latroy. Uh, first, Super Bowl coming up. Uh, I'll just I'll just lead off. I'll say the things I've said yeah. on our football shows. I don't pick against Patrick Mahomes. I picked him in all three playoff games. I'm going to pick him to win the Super Bowl. I think the ability of Mahomes, Kelsey, Andy Reid, and Steve Spagnola. To not only, you know, Reed and Spagnola come up with great game plans. The game plan got them off to a really fast start against the Ravens last week. But they also have the ability, because of Mahomes, Kelsey, um, and the coaching, they have the ability to adapt so quickly if they need to change or adapt anything within a game. Uh, the 49ers are excellent. They're great. I'm still going to pick Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. You know, I'm with you, but I love the storylines of both teams. Like, I, this is how I view it. I'm like, I love the storylines of both teams going in, right? I, I wouldn't yep. be upset if Brock Purdy continued this and, yeah. and did that. Um, however, I also love the dynasty of Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think they just have, right, the experience, been there, done that. Um not to say this is going to be a cakewalk by any means. And then on on the flip side, I like to see Christian McCaffrey finally get, you know, the Super Bowl, why he, why he wanted to be traded. Da, 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 da. So I just, as a viewer, not even as what we do for a profession, as a viewer, I'm like, this is so loaded with so many storylines. I just love it. But Patrick Mahomes has been there, done that. And we'll hear later from 
Latroy Hawkins, and he talks to, uh, about this too, how Patrick is a leader of this team. And when you've already been to the, the big game and you've already won it, you know how to get your guys in certain moments and to get them over the hump. It's the moment won't be too big for them. And I'm not saying it's going to be too big for the 49ers. I'm just like, I, I, I'm with you. I think they're going to continue back to back is always so hard to do. And that, you know, some teams are like, well, we've been here before. We're easily going to win it. No, they want to prove it again. Um, and also just for an aside, I thought about this a couple of times. I'm like, wow. So Taylor Swift won a Grammy. What if Kelsey Travis Kelsey wins? So what a year for this couple, you know, like, when they're old and gray, if they're still together, I'm like, remember that year when you won the Super Bowl and we were just dating and I got the Grammy the same year, you know, that you know, coming off that heiress tour. I know that's weird, but I, you know, that was just a little blip in my mind this morning. Like that would be kind of cool on a weird tangent, not a football tangent. So, well, and we have more Swifty and uh, Mahomes talk coming up with Latroy, who uh, Latroy is uh, Patrick Mahomes' godfather. Uh, let's uh, let's wrap up this segment before we get to Latroy. Do you have an FTG this week? Mm. Um, my FTG is for a collective. It is for the collective group of people that are against um, the whole Travis and Taylor. Like a, a part of me is ha happy for the Super Bowl to kind of happen so I don't have to hear it anymore. Um, just the vitriol. Um, but on the flip side, there's so many people saying if, if this affects you so much or also your young daughters, like Taylor Swift doesn't care what you're saying about her, but your daughters are listening. Right. So it's the FTG point. for the, the collective of the people who are talking like really, if that affects you as a person that you're so angry about people, you don't even know um, what, what, what example are you showing to the young girls and young boys that are watching it? Like, Oh, okay. A woman shouldn't like express herself. Um, so FTG to that group. Well, you took my FTG, so I'm just going to agree with you. And we will talk more about wow. that with, with LaTroy Hawkins, uh, who is very good on the subject as well. So, for, hey, for right now, I want to let you know if you like this show, if you like any show at TalkNorth.com, we got Krasinski, we got Russo, we got uh, Jeff Diamond's been great on the uh, Vikings salary cap machinations and how they're going to put it all together. We have the Viking Update show. Uh, we've just got a lot of good stuff. If you like the show at talknorth.com, please subscribe to your favorite podcast app. It's free. It's the easiest way to listen. And now we're going to talk to another podcaster. Latroy Hawkins has started a podcast with his old friend, uh, Jack Jones. Uh, Don and I are going to chat with him about it. Hey, thanks to everybody for listening. Enjoy Latroy. As promised, today's special guest, Latroy Hawkins, uh, special assistant to baseball operations, uh, still very involved with the Twins. Uh, and now has started a new podcast with one, another one of my old favorites uh, when I covered the Twins, Jack Jones. It's, it's great to hear your voices together. You're getting great guests, of course. So, LaTroy, just start off. Catch us up with everything going on in your life and the new podcast. Ooh, everything is going on. First of all, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate being on. It's always a pleasure when you can get to talk to old friends, Jim. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure. Um, what's going on in my life? Man, I thought I retired eight years ago. I Stayed at home for a year. Then I took the special assistant job with the Twins and started doing, um, you know, probably about 30 games on a broadcast. broadcast um, for It started off as Fox. Now it's Bally's. Well, now it's, we don't know who it's going to be. <laughs> yep. But I'm doing that, um, just going around our organization, uh, helping out pitchers uh, from the Dominican all the way up to the major leagues. And when I say helping out, you know, a lot of it doesn't have to do with working on the mechanics or the pitch design and all that stuff. Uh, we got enough computers that can do that. You know, for me, it's mostly um, from the neck up, from the neck up for me, just, you know, helping them um, understand about what it takes to be a pro um, mindset when you're on the mound, you know, different ways to attack hitters and things like that. So that's predominantly my job when they say special assistant to baseball operations. Um, a life. My daughter's a senior in college. Wife's doing her thing um, with her nonprofit. Find one reason to smile, hmm. and which I love. That's a great, mm -hmm. great name for a great organization. Yep, and we work with uh, domestic violence survivors, male and females, 
Um, and, you know, recently, Jack Jones, another former twin, and I decided to, you know, neither one of us are really big talkers. Um, <laughs> so when Jack came to me and asked me, he's like, hey, you would like to do a podcast? I told him, I said, hey, I um, I worked for TuneIn Radio. I mean, TuneIn at one time in 2016. I was like, I know some great producers. So let me reach out to uh, Jeremiah Tittle and see what he can um you know, if he can help us. And he said, sure he could. And talked about what we wanted the podcast to be about. So we came up with the name and the name is thick skin mm-hmm. uh, with Jack and Hawk. And that's on Instagram. Our Instagram page is thick underscore skin underscore podcast. And we're talking about, um, you know, when the media gets it wrong, uh, guys, have a chance <laughs> to, what? <laughs> guys have a chance to, to um, tell their side of the story. And, you know, our very first episode was with my buddy, Jock Jones and the situation he found himself in uh, back in 2017, when he was the assistant hitting coach with the Washington nationals and uh, the media made it out to be, it was revenge porn. And, you know, that wasn't a definition of revenge porn back then. And the first episode, he gets a chance to uh, apologize for his wrongdoing and also give you insight of actually, you know, what happened. And he apologized to the young lady. He apologized to everybody that believed in him. And he did some soul searching. And I thought it was the best way to start off a podcast uh, being called Thick Skin because, you know, the the criticism, the being blackballed and all the things that he had to deal with, uh, he needed thick skin. He needed thick skin. I texted with Jack a couple of times the last few days. Uh, sounds like he's still living in San Diego and doing pretty well. Yeah, he's doing great. He's doing great. And doing, doing that time, you know, you know, he, he I took that time out to go back and go to college and get his college degree. Mm-hmm. He did that. Um, you know, also did some reflection. Um, therapist. Um, strengthened his relationship with his kids and just – you know, just a little soul searching and understood, you know, we all make mistakes and he deserves a second chance. And as me being his big brother, anything I do, he's going to be a part of. And the people that I'm saying I'm, I'm a part of, they say, no, we're going to keep, we're going to keep, you know, pushing that until they say yes. Latroy, it was, um, it was great for me. I reconnected with Jock. Um, on, we're out friends on Facebook and he is, he was very, this is many, uh, maybe five, eight years ago. And he was like, wait a minute. I know I know you like refresh my memory. Cause he, he was a little standoffish. Like, you know, who is this? And, uh, the funny story is when I moved to Minnesota, I got his old apartment. So I was getting his mail. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd be like, I, I go to the twins and I'm like, um, Hey Jack, um, just aside from all the other media. And I said, I think I have your mail. And he's like, what? He goes, any paychecks in there? And I'm like, no, unfortunately, no paychecks. <laughs> but I said, yeah. So I told him where I was living. He goes, yes. Oh, my gosh. So we'd always laugh about that. And, and, you know, not that we became super close. You know, you always try to maintain the boundary, especially a, a woman for me. I always maintain professional boundaries. I'm not buddy buddies with the players. Just, you know, just how I've learned that in my career. But we always just kind of, that was our, our joke, our laugh. And I'm like, yeah, Macy's wondering where the heck you are. Here, here's your 10% discount, you know, that kind of stuff. And we have this joke. So we, I don't know, it was a friend suggestion or something like that. And so I just sent him a note like, hey, you know, your, your Macy's discount is still waiting for you. And then he just laughed. And so we have been friends that way on Facebook. And it has been wonderful for me. I saw him when he posted the pictures when he got his degree. And he's posting pictures about, you know, w- whether he's getting back in shape or something with his kids. And it just, I'm so glad you were doing this because people from the outside don't see many athletes as humans, you know? Yeah. Um, and they hold you, they hold athletes. And I say they, cause it's fans as well. Um, hold athletes sometimes to this impossible plateau, um, that you have to be perfect, that you, you can't stumble, that you can't make a mistake right. and that they're not human. And so for me, that's just been beautiful, uh, to see him kind of have this metamorphosis. So I'm so glad you guys are doing that podcast. Yeah. And you know, Jock was, he's always been a quiet guy and it's funny mm-hmm. because <clears throat> my mom passed away in July of 2020 and his mom 
Miss Linda, Mama Linda with Mama L, I call her. She checks on me every month. She sends mm-hmm. me a text. How you doing? How you doing, son? How you doing? How you doing? And um, two days ago, she was saying, she was like, I want to thank you, LaTroy, for, you know, being a big brother to Jock because I'm seeing a side of him. I didn't think he, I didn't know he had. And I was like, that's what the bar, the, the podcast is for, you know, so people can see a different side of us. Yeah. And she was like, that's my own son. I didn't know. I, I'd never seen that side. And I was, and she was like, I appreciate you. And I was like, no, I appreciate you more because she's mm-hmm. checked on me every month since my mom passed away. Mm-hmm. Yep. And my condolences on that. I've lost both my yes. parents and, and me too. Losing your parents is, I, I would say, I lost the rudder, my compass, you know, yes. and, and it doesn't go away. I mean, I think we just learned to deal with it a little bit more, but it's one of the most earth shattering things I think can happen to you. So I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, it's, when you go through it, it's like you lose the first person who ever loves you unconditionally. Yeah. And it's something to deal with. But I like I tell my brothers and I, I, when I speak to people, I say, she prepared us to live without her. And mm-hmm. I think she did her job, even though we miss her. She prepared us to live without her because she knew if it goes the way it's supposed to go, eventually we were going to have to live without our parents. Mm-hmm. So I always give her credit for preparing me for that. Wow. Well, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Latroy, this is, this is old ground. We've talked about this before and it's probably pretty well known by twin states, but I'm, I'm still, I'm just always fascinated by your career path. I mean, I, you know, uh, I, I remember going down to Gary or where was it? Um, where did you play low a ball? Uh, Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne. That's right. I went down oh. to Fort Wayne when you were top prospect and dominating that league and chatted with you that it was the first time I met you. And then I saw you go through everything you went through to make it and to establish yourself as a big league pitcher. And then, you know, the highlight uh, for twins fans is you standing on the mound, throwing a hundred or whatever in Oakland during a playoff game. And, you know, Nobody could have predicted what would come next, that you'd end up pitching for like 50 teams and pitching for 40 years and staying around the big leagues forever. Uh, you know, you talk about your mom. What was she the inspiration or was there somebody in your life who helped you have the kind of perseverance you needed to have the kind of career you had? You know, what, Jim, it, I, it all boils, it goes back to my mom and my grandmother and my grandfather. Um, my grandfather worked in a steel mill for 38 years. Mm. Um, you know, my mom was a single mom raising three boys. Uh, I'll never say she did it by herself because we had a whole village. Um, my grandmother Lee, my mom's mom, you know, my aunts, you know, it was just, we we're a tight knit family. We didn't have a lot, but, um, you know, just seeing all the people in our, our family, how resilient the people around me were, uh, growing up in a blue collar city like Gary, Indiana, um, you have to be tough. If you don't, mm-hmm. you're going to get taken advantage of um, things that that, you know, will get under the skin or rattle or throw, you know, a normal person, a regular person off compass. You know, those things wasn't able to to throw me off compass when I was on my journey through the minor leagues to try to get to the big leagues and being able to stay in the big leagues. Uh, the perseverance, just being, you know, just seeing things from from a Gary Indiana, Gary, Indiana, a Midwest blue collar perspective. I think that definitely helped me uh, through all the ups and the downs. Um, like you said, those first couple of years in the major leagues, they weren't pretty, um, but I didn't give up. I did not give up. And I, and I have to give praise to uh, the great Tom Kelly because I didn't give up on myself because TK never gave up on me. TK never gave up. on me. I don't care how bad I, I was. He never gave up on me. He saw something inside of me that I didn't see in myself. Um, and without TK being in my corner, um, I don't think my career lasts 21 years. Mm-hmm. I, I really don't. But, you know, TK being a, a, a great talent ev- evaluator, a uh, great he was a mentor. And you don't appreciate these things when you're going through it. You don't. I didn't appreciate all this until I left Minnesota to think about how ins- inspirational that TK was in my, my major league development. So, you know, so I got my grandparents, my mom, you know, in the minor leagues and just, you know, everything that was instilled in me. And then once I got to the major leagues, I went, I had TK 
And when I left TK, I went right to Dusty Baker. So I think my foundation mm-hmm. was solid. Wow. Um, I had a solid foundation. Uh, tell you what, TK and Dusty Baker, that's that's quite a combination. Hmm. The first two big league managers? Yes, indeed, Jim. <laughs> Man. Well, um, Latroy, you don't remember, but I was with you. Um, I covered you in 2004 when you were with the Cubs. And then I came here uh, in November of 2004 and Dusty Baker and I witnessed your immaculate inning covered that game uh, where you struck out nine pitchers versus the Marlins. I will never forget that day um, because I was thinking, I kind of got the chills when you said your podcast was named Thick Skin Podcast because in that one season, I saw how you were riding high and justifiably so because you're pitching so well and then how Cubs fans booed you and how some of, I would say, the Chicago media got on you. And I was thinking, are you kidding me? You know, like how the roller coaster went that year. But you, I have to tell you, to me, and you, I was just like the young girl. I just had, you know, I've been in Chicago maybe for almost five years at that point. But I'd never seen Cubs fans, especially because they hadn't won anything, turn on someone so fast. But you were always the epitome of class. And you were one of my favorite you know, players. I was always in the scrum. I was at CLTV. You know, I wasn't like one of the four major um, stations, but you were always my favorite. But I I will never forget. I've had some distinct moments. I I was there with the Bartman ball, you know, uh, years at at a different point. But to see you pitch that immaculate inning, it's one of those moments that are like forever embedded in my mind. I don't know where that stands in, in your whole illustrious career of 20 plus years, but uh, that was an amazing, uh, just nine pitches to like do away with them. I was like blown away. It was, and you're right, man, that time in Chicago was definitely um, one of the tougher seasons for me in my major league career. And, and only because I left Minnesota where everybody's Minnesota nice. Yeah to walk into the hornet's nest of the Chicago media. Mm -hmm. Um, Was I rough around the edges when it came to dealing with some of the stuff that the media was writing and saying? Yes, because, you know, where I'm from, if, you know, if you attack me, I'm very well prepared to snap back. Right. And was it the right thing to do at the time? No. But I felt like I was defending myself because I didn't have anybody to defend me. And the only body could defend LaTroy at that time was LaTroy. That immaculate inning was September 11th, 2004. Yes. Mm-hmm. September 11th. I mm-hmm. didn't know that I threw that until 2012 when I signed with the Angels. I was signing autographs at Disney. At Disney, out in Anaheim. And a guy wanted me to write it on a ball. Wow. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I got over 10 years in the major leagues at, th- at this time, and I had no clue. The really? No clue. No clue at all. Blue. I was like, what? Immaculate. Uh-huh. They didn't even, I didn't even know it after the game. They, nobody told me. Weird. Stop. Nobody Are you kidding me? me? Nobody told me. It was eight years later when I found out. That's crazy. Oh, my goodness. Eight I knew that later. day. <laughs> I had no clue. <sighs> even if you listen to the announcement, I don't even, to my knowledge, I've watched it recently in the last two months. Um, Oh, the game itself? Yeah. Oh, like the the broadcast? Oh, yeah. They don't talk about immaculate inning. It's like he struck out the side in nine pitches. Oh. They don't talk about the game. We knew. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's amazing to me. Nope. So I had no clue. After the game, not one reporter um, brought it up to my, brought it to my knowledge. But I look at it this way, too, because when I did well in the city, nobody talked to us, the bullpen. When you do bad, it's the only time they talk to you. Right. And I always thought that that thought process for me was so butt backwards. <laughs> uh-huh. And if you're going to be in the player's face when he does bad, you have to be in his face asking him what was his thought process when he did when he was successful. Mm-hmm. And they never did that. They didn't do it often enough. I won't say they never. They didn't do it often enough. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when I did convert a save, 
I was doing the quarterback thing. I was giving credit to the guys who pitched before me. Right. Because those guys got no, no airtime. They got none. Right. And in my mind, it always, the bullpen is one of the most important pieces of a team. So whoever comes out of the bullpen, they're important. It's very, it's, they're coming in, in, in the game in a very important spot. You can lose the game in the sixth inning, you can lose it in the ninth inning, or you can lose it in the first. So right. at those pivotal moments, I don't think back then we looked at all those pivotal moments where, whoa, this game could have got out of hand had Tony Fiore, Jim, had not, hadn't came in and put the flames out. The vulture. The vulture, <laughs> right. And handed the, the ball to Latroy, and then Latroy was able to hand it to Eddie Guardado. Without Tony, without um, a J.C. Romero, without, you know, Mike Jackson and all those guys, like, it's not possible. Mm-hmm. It's not possible. So I just always thought, like, they only came to talk to you when you did bad, and I didn't like that. Mm. Well, you're leading into a topic I really wanted to get into with you today, and that is the uh, Twins this year. You guys had an excellent bullpen uh, because of you, because of Eddie, and then you know, there were some underrated people who ended up mixing there. Like I said, Tony Fiore was not exactly a top prospect, but he pitched really well for you guys. This is current Twins team now. I'm not sure we've ever seen this kind of collection of arms in a Twins bullpen. Uh, not only do you have, I mean, you have Duran who throws about 103. You have Brock Stewart who throws about 101 with break. You got, uh, you know, Jax who throws about 98. Uh, you got Varland who throws about 100 when he is a reliever as opposed to being a starter. Uh, Thielbar has been excellent for this team. And they keep adding. They keep adding outstanding bullpen arms. They, you know, got Topa in the trade. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, so I'm, I'm interested in your perspective on where this team is headed with that. And if you see that as kind of an evolution where for some, some, some of these starters, they're only really going to want them to go five innings because they want to get to the bullpen arms. Well, it has been an evolution uh, for the Minnesota Twins because I think that we were, I think we were behind the curve with the guys with the 95 plus fastball consistently. Um, Derek and Thad have done a great job of uh, keying in on guys that we needed in this bullpen. I think our player development has done a great job helping guys gain. Um, more miles per hour on their fastball. So it's been a, a, a collective, it's been a collective effort from player development, uh, the front office and, um, and the major league staff being able to get these, develop these arms that we know we've seen from the teams of one uh, over the, over the last eight years, what we needed to be successful from a bullpen perspective. Uh, when you start talking about the starters, um, you know, last year we, you know, I think we were either first or second in, in innings pitch or innings per start from a starter. Mm-hmm. And the year before Rocco took a lot of a heat because our guys are only going three and four and sometimes five innings. Well, when you have the horses where you can keep guys out there longer, then you keep them. But when you don't, you got to get them out of there. And I don't think a lot of fans really understand that because, you know, their mentality is, oh, they're going on analytics. Well, we're going on our, you know, what we have, our, you know, our, you know, what, what the hand that we're dealt. Mm -hmm. So, and when you're doing that, you're wearing the bullpen out because when the bullpen has to cover four innings every night, that's going to catch up. That's going to catch up to you. Last year, we were able to get past that and push guys to that sixth inning. And now your bullpen is only having to cover uh, three innings a night, maybe two and two thirds or something. That's when your pull, bullpen takes that next step because guys are always well rested. So they're always going to be, they're going to be, they're going to feel good. And when you're feeling good out there, you know, that helps with your performance a lot of the time, but you're right. We have some guys, we got some, we got some arms. Um, we got, a, um, Alcala, hopefully he's healthy this year and he can come back. He's 97 and 99 yep. miles an hour himself mm. with a nice um, slider. Yeah. Good slider. And we got Griffin Jacks, who's, you know, he was a starter. His fastball has ticked up over the last couple of years. And with his his uh, slider and his um, sweeper, he's learned that pitch. He's added to his repertoire. Now it makes him that much more dangerous coming out of the bullpen. 
Um, like you said, we brought in Topa. Topa had a great year last year. Uh, 75 appearances, I think. I mean, that's that's a lot of appearances in, in 2023. Mm-hmm. Not many guys coming out of the bullpen is uh, throwing that many innings. Yeah. Um, appearing, having that many appearances. And we just brought on um, Stallman. He throws yep. hard. So, I mean, we've, we've tried to uh, replace a couple guys and that we left. We got Sonny Gray that left. And when you have Maeda left. And hopefully Patty can, you know, come back off of Tommy John surgery and, um, you know, be the pitcher we thought he was he could be when we traded for him from San Diego. And uh, I'm a big Bailey Ober fan. I'm a huge mm. Bailey. Ober fan. Yeah, you know, it, too. Bailey is just a guy. He's going to go out there. It's not going to be uber pretty and anything. He's going to go out there and do his job. He's going to get the job. Will he give us some home runs? Yes, it's, it's part of it. He's going to give up some home runs. Uh, but I love the way his mound presence. Uh, I like his pitch mix. I like how he attacks the zone. Doesn't walk a lot of guys. So when you don't walk a lot of guys, so people don't know when you don't walk a lot of guys, that means one thing. You're in the strike zone a lot. So when you're in the mm-hmm. strike zone, guys, major league hitters, they're going to hit strikes. So he's going to give up some. But he's not giving up free passes. And that's what I, that's my admiration with my big, my, my big boy, Bailey Ober. And <laughs> we got, you know, Lopez who's coming off an incredible season. And you know what? If he can keep progressing, uh, you know, to that Cy Young type of, of, you know, expectations that he has for himself and that we has for him, we have on him, you know, that helps with, you know, with our fan base losing, trading him for Luis Arias. And, you know, that just helps for that. And we needed to pitch in and to get a good pitcher, you got to give up something good. And we had to give up a really good hitter to get a really good pitcher. And then Joe Ryan, you know, hopefully he can have a bounce back season. Not that he had a terrible season, but he had that stretch towards the end of the season where he just, you know, he wasn't out there long. He was giving up a whole lot of home runs. And hopefully he can continue to work on his off-speed pitches uh, so he can um, he can reduce some of those home runs that he's get, he's he gave up last year. And you know what? We have a good team. We just need our young guys not to have that sophomore slump. Mm -hmm. And if we can keep them from having that sophomore slump, I think we're going to be a very good team in the National League. And we're going to be at the top of the American League Central. And hopefully we're winning uh, some games late in October. Lutra, I know you – oh, sorry, Jim. No, go ahead. I I, I know that you – you know, you deal with so many different personalities uh, when you're dealing with the pitcher. But when you say you said earlier that you work um, from the neck up, w- what is maybe the number one thing overall? Or maybe there's a couple that you have to deal with with young pitchers, especially so they don't get into a sophomore slump or or what do you see generally? Is it is it hard where they think they're going to be the, uh, like a starter and they move to, you know, middle relief or closer or what's the number one from the neck up issue that you you work on with these kids? The number one issue is confidence, um, mm. reminding them that they they are good enough. Because I'm, I think I'm probably the one guy that doesn't overload them with information. Yeah. And in this day and age, some guys get overloaded with information. And as a as an organization, we do a good job of not, or I won't say not. We do a good job of being conscious of trying not to do that. But with me, they know. I'm not going to overload them with information. What I'm mm-hmm. giving them is is simple. Um, and I always tell them what I'm telling you is from experience. From the from the book of done, done did it or the book <laughs> of been there and done that. <laughs> so it's not coming from a computer. It's not coming from Rap Soto or um, Track Man. It's coming from Hawkman. It's all about working with their, you know, just helping them mentality a mentality. There is a mentality that you have to have and and letting, helping them understand, like, you know what, that guy that you're facing, he want to drive a nice car. Yeah. He want to have a nice house. He want to eat at the finest restaurants. You got to make sure you got to find a way where you can cut one of those three things he liked to do. (laughs) You got to find a way you can take one of those from him. (laughs) Because if you don't, he's going to take, He's going to take one from you. He's going to take yeah. one from you. So f- we got to figure it out. And it starts with confidence. Then it breaks. Mm-hmm. It goes to being able to uh, execute a plan. And when you can execute a plan with the mentality, 
it, it works in your favor. It works in your favor from a baseball perspective. And it also is, I always tell them, remember, hitting is hard. <laughs> hitting <laughs> is hard. So don't give them a lot of credit. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, I want to get at least one more topic. But first, uh, tell me about your, uh, you have a local business you're, you're involved with, XL Power Bikes. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, during the pandemic, the shortened season in 2020, good friend of mine, Eric Weber, you've probably seen some of the stories. So he's in my fan club. Um, when he was, I think he started, I met him when he was probably a sophomore in high school. Uh, he's the kid that I gave my BMW to to go to the prom, his senior prom out in oh, Hastings. Oh, I remember yeah. that story. It was great. Yes, it was Eric. And he's oh. a, um, <clears throat> graduated from college, you know, one of the best men in his wedding. And during the pandemic, That's... he started this company where he he bought these electric bikes and just rented them out on the riverfront down in Hastings. So he was like, hey, when you come up here, I'll give you a bike to ride back and forth to the ballpark. So he brought me a bike two days in. I was like, hey. Let's buy about 15 more of these bikes. These things are incredible. <laughs> yeah. Try to order them. They were sold out because of the pandemic. You know, people were trying to get outside. And later on that year, he had rented to a family and the guy wanted to start his own company. So he brought Eric in and, you know, said, you know, raise some money and we can start the company. So we raised some money. We started the company and the rest is history. Um, we're out of River Falls. Um, we got um, we got four bikes on the market right now, and if you go to XL Power Bikes, um, dot com, you can see the bikes. Uh, we got the City Slicker. We have the Hawk named after me. We have the nice. Showtime named after what I I named Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Uh, and we your have, godson, right? Isn't Patrick yeah. Mahomes your godson? Yeah. Patrick, yes. And then we have the Big <laughs> Ticket, which we named after Kevin Garnett. Oh, that's awesome. And we also added over the last couple of years, a hunting bike with the hunting colors, super quiet. Um, the motor's amazing to get up and down, you know, the mountain or some rough terrain. So, you know, I'll be in Minnesota in March for the big uh, outdoors convention over in St. Paul. I'll be giving, um, be there with, you know, with our boot at our booth. I'll be giving a sign and autographs. Uh, for, you know, people that come by the booth and um, hopefully we can sell some more bikes and it's starting our fifth year and business has been, it's been, it's been steady getting better every year. It's getting better yeah. everywhere, every year. Is the Hawk your favorite? <laughs> you know what? Actually, the big ticket is my favorite. <laughs> the big ticket. I love the big ticket. It's big. It's, it's probably about 72 pounds. Wow. Um and I was a big Kevin Garnett fan, so it was perfect for me. Does it trash talk while you're driving it? <laughs> no, I wish we could, we could get it to do that. But, you know, we're, we're steady up updating uh, a lot of the, the features that we have. Um, change the throttle to, to the other side from the, from the right side to the left side. Mm. You know, we're just trying to make the bike better. Uh, it's user-friendly. It's a great – it's great for people who, you know – I always tell people it's great for couples because a lot of yeah. times when, when it's a, it's, it's a couple, somebody's going to be in better shape than the other. And, and someone's going to be lagging behind and needing your bike. Somebody's going to be lagging behind. You're <laughs> correct. And with the, with the bike, the battery goes 40 to 50 miles. So, I mean, you can keep up with your spouse, you know, all the time. And if you, you guys can go out on a long ride and don't have to worry about getting too tired and having to come back, you can just mm. use you can pedal assistance one through five, or you can be on pe uh, zero and you can use it as a regular bike. Oh, awesome. Yep. That's cool. Well, thanks for telling us about that. Now it's Super Bowl week. So uh, tell us if you have any, any good insights into Patrick Mahomes. Also, what have you made of the whole uh, Taylor Swift scene? <laughs> Ooh, insight on Patrick. Um, you know what? Chatted with him for a little bit yesterday. Um, he's always the same. He's always cool, calm, and collective, man. It's like he understands what he has to do. Uh, he understands. He's a great leader because he understands how to get his guys around him ready to play. Um, but you know what? It's the Super Bowl. Anything, anything can happen. But I think this Super Bowl will mean a lot more to everybody in that Kansas City Chiefs organization and all – 
Kansas City Chiefs fans because of um, the type of season that they had. They had a very up and down season. I think they ended up 11 and six in the regular season. And, you know, a lot of people counted them out to being in this situation right here, being in the Super Bowl again, being in a position where they can defend their, you know, their their championship last year. Um, So this one, I think, is going to be a little bit more sweeter for all those guys and all the Chiefs fans. And um, I have no doubt they're going to pull it off. And the Taylor Swift effect, um, you know what? I I think people are in an a uproar over nothing. I think people find a way to hate uh, everything if they don't approve of it. Um, Taylor's just another girlfriend who happens happens to be a mega superstar supporting her man. Mm-hmm. That's all she is. That's all she is. And I hope and I and I wish people just saw her as that. Um, I understand what the NFL is doing. And hey, they showing her, you know, that's fine. At first, I was like, why? But, you know, once you you really start to sit down and think about it, you know. Her ability to bring in a whole different demographic of fans to the NFL is something we've never seen before. <laughs> never seen it. Her and three hundred and thirty million dollars too. That's a lot of money. The NFL's going to keep showing her. Yeah, but they like, <laughs> she got girls, young girls. Yes, watching football. Yes. I don't see the problem with that. That that should be we should be applauding that and not trying to tear her down or tear the NFL down because of that. Thank I think you. that I tell people she don't control the camera. She don't. She really don't. She don't. Well, I said, you know, that's the thing, Latroy. She's sitting in a booth with everybody else. She's not asking for attention. Right. And here's the other thing. Not only is she not asking for attention, the cameras are, I think the New York Times did a piece on this. The cameras are on her about 25 seconds a day. Yes. Yeah, combined. Yes. Right. I was going right, to get right. to that, too. I was going to get to that. And I'm like, if that's, and that's the next, I say, if that's, if out of 25 seconds, no more than 40 seconds of the game, you see her. And that bugs you out of a three hour and a half game. Right. right. I think you need to check yourself. You really need to check yourself. You and we've really said it before. Ch- we've said it before on this podcast too. I mean, I just think. Uh, <laughs> and first of all, I think most people either like Taylor Swift or just don't care. It's just not a, a big deal to them. It's. I think it's a very small minority, but it's a very vocal minority, and it's it's people who like are misogynists or they're afraid of powerful women or whatever. Because, I mean, Taylor Swift has never done anything in her life to uh, invite criticism. Well, and you know, we had said this just like you, Troy, that um, at the beginning, we're like, when we weren't sure if it was a, you know, a publicity stunt, like, does she really like them? Um, is, you know, what is this for? And we're like, well, what, what's going on here? And then when we realized these are just two people that are trying to date each other in a high powered, you know, careers, both of them. And Jim, I even said this on this podcast. Remember Jim, like I've changed my tune. Like they're actually dating. Who cares? Like, this is fun. Let, let it live out. Um, my photographer has a, a, sm- a young girl and he's like, I love it for the first time ever. She's watching football with me on Sunday. <laughs> like she's watching that's it. The, that's the effect. It. She's brought in <laughs> exactly. so many people. She's great for their business. She's a great human being. And she doesn't, again, she's not, I mean, the thing I always said was Travis Kelsey doesn't need more attention. Taylor Swift doesn't need more attention. There was never any reason for them to manufacture this. Great way to look at it, Jim. They don't need more attention. She happens to be a billionaire and he happens to be a millionaire and they're both superstars in their respective field. Yes. They're both superstars. And they're they're both great people too. And they're both great people because Kelsey is a good dude. He is He is. He is a solid dude. But it's, But I don't like people just people just never cease to amaze me, man. Like my mama used to always say, man, you can't satisfy everybody. (laughs) You can't satisfy everybody. Everybody's going to somebody's going to have something to say. They're going to have something to say. And people who are fed up with 40 seconds of Taylor Swift out of a three hour and 30 minute game, they have issues. (laughs) She's on camera less than long snappers. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, well, and everyone loved when when Jason Kelsey took a shirt off and jumped out of the the suite and like kind of made a spectacle. You know, some of my friends were like, "Why are you showing Jason? What, what, why are you making a big deal? How many seconds are we on? Who do you sound like?" You know, mm-hmm. it's which I love the Jason taking the shirt off and doing that. And I love it when they go, I love seeing people's reactions to what's going on in a game. That's, you know, we don't live in a world that is all about 
this, this, this. Like, you know, that's why we always say, hey, give me a cutaway. Show me fan reactions. Give me the heroes. Give the atmosphere. And that is the atmosphere. That's the atmosphere. And they just happen to be, she just happened to be a megastar. And she hadn't said one word, not no. one word. Kelsey hadn't said one word. They hadn't said anything. Yeah. Everything that's being said is from somebody else's perspective. Mm -hmm. They hadn't said anything. And you know what? That's great because nobody needs to know. They're dating. They're right. having fun. They're both young. They're both young. And I tell you what, 98% of the population wish they were them. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's like the not, Marilyn Monroe or Joe DiMaggio, you know? Yes. Higher, <laughs> higher than 98. It. Higher than 98? <laughs> yes. Higher than 98. <laughs> Well, hey, LaTroy, always great catching up with you. Uh, really appreciate the conversation as always. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Any final thoughts for us? Anything else you want to chat about before we let you go? No, just, hey, if you're out there, listen to podcasts, listen to this podcast, listen to Thick Skin Podcast, wherever you get your podcast from, uh, come check us out. Uh, Jock and I were just talking about what we know, and that's baseball and a few other things. Beautiful. All right, awesome. we'll, we'll catch up again soon. Really appreciate the time. And and uh, I don't know that I'm going to be in spring training, but I'm sure I'll see you at some point this year. All right. You guys be good. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you.